that thought of it, like squeeze your toes, good coaching point. All right, but the weight is on your mentally on that push foot, okay? So, and the other thing, just like we talked on pass rush, we want to do this. As we come off the stunt, this hand down, we want to roll off the hand, not lift the hand. And we think that's very important, guys. Because we know when you lift your hand, it lifts your pad up. So it's things, that little, it's little things. And you know, uh, in 1970-something, I met a guy who was a, high, a third grade graduate. He had started a, uh, he was a butcher. He had started a uh, um, takeout hamburger, all that stuff, you know. And I met the guy, and he was a really nice guy. And we were talking, and he said, my <coughs> motto is going to be to my employees. Everything is important. What's important? Everything's important. Uh, the guy went on to be Wendy's guy, Dave Thomas, who's got the damn things all, I mean, he's dead now, Wendy, uh, Dave, God bless him. He's got them all over the damn place. I walked in one the other day because uh, uh, I guess I've always liked him because of him. He's such a great, nice person. I walked in, I saw a sign <coughs> in the back of the place, way back, over the cooler, and it said, everything is important. He built that business on everything being important. That's the way football, to <coughs> me, that's what... I look at it the same way, and I talk about it. everything is important. What's important? Everything. Little things, little things. Take care of the little things, and the big things won't be so big. So them steps and that stance and everything are a little thing that I think keeps big things from being so big. Okay? We do that light for me, please. So they work in loops right here in the off season. Ch change of direction, shuffling. Don't cross them over. Now they're going to accelerate using their, like we talked about. Here's a gap step. This is an inside gap step. Shuffling, bursting five, moving on that hat. Funky snap count. Be sure and give them a. Be sure and give them hard count. Teach your manager how to do it. <coughs> what we do is this. Stop him right there if you would. This my manager is. He got two things. He's gonna. He's gonna do this for me. He's gonna give me hard counts and things like that. When we play a team, it's his responsibility to come away with a snap count. If I got he, he we record it and put it in. If I got him back, he'll he'll do it the next year. If I don't have him back, teach somebody else. Okay, unless they change staff. So in a game, I give him that responsibility. You get that. You you get the quarterback. I want you to hear the quarterback. I want you to write it up and turn it into me at the game. So that way, we always kind of stay ahead. If they don't change staff, okay. This manager right here is a really good one too. That's an inside gap move. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Break to the ball using, and then break down. Break down on the ball carry. Now, stop it right there if you would, just a minute, before they go. Okay, this is an off-season program uh, up in Philadelphia. Good back level right there on this, on the beginning of that stunt, isn't it? Yep. All right. Let me tell you guys, we all, we all brotherhood in here to me. We're all coaches. We can, I, I, we can be honest and talk. Me and John were talking about it last night. I love coaches. I love, he does too. I just, I love people who, who work hard and give their time to kids and help do all the things that you guys do. Uh, there was a guy came to visit me, and there was a guy came to visit me, and he said he watched some of this film that you're about to watch, and he said, "Boy, you got some, you got some athletes. I mean, they can do, they, they can do this, and they can do." He was telling me. So we kept watching film, we kept watching film. We said, I like the guy. We were sitting there, you know, kept going. He said it twice more. And it dawned on me what he was saying to me. Hey, Pete, you ain't doing shit. <laughs> 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 you just got to some great athletes. And the other thing dawned on me was this. He was saying to me, basically, mine can't do that because they ain't great athletes. And I said, Coach, I said, what's the day? You know the day of the month? He looked at his watch and he said, March 18th. I said, okay, so Wednesday, March 18th. If you would have been here yesterday, March 17th is the day we, we, we had this, we worked on this drill. March 17th. Camp opens July 16th. We're working on it March 17th. Yeah. You'll be impressed with some of the things they do. 
Now, Coach, I didn't make them athletes. You know, I can't do that. I can't create that. But good athletes who are trained to take efficient steps and do things like that become even better at things. So I would encourage you, you know, don't ever let yourself fall into that. He, he really wanted to use an excuse. I want to go let his ass. Okay? I want to let him do it. All right, so this is the thing that we, this is an off-season program we work in here. Go back to the beginning, if you would. We got a, uh, we got a ball in there, and they're working the inside gap move, okay? Roll off that front hand. Now, here's the thing, too. You see them run, this is what you called it last night, and I was impressed that you, I, I never have seen many people use that word, heel line. This is what I call the heel line. The heel line to me is the, the, where the offensive lineman's heels are prior to the snap of the football. Okay, so we're trying to achieve the heel line, and then we, if we do this, we work the heel line. If the ball's going this way, we U-turn the heel line. Okay, and that's our U-turn is just to us that we want to U-turn back down the heel line. Okay, all right. Now they're going to work the heel line. Quick. Here I am giving them directions. We can see it on this shot right here. Go ahead, you can see, you can see the directions. Okay, so you got four of them going. Here's two of them. Now they U turn. U turn. Heel line. Change directions. Loop step. Work the heel line. <coughs> okay, stop it just a minute. I'm going to show you two shots. I'm going to talk to you two shots. I'm going to show you one where a guy does what we call a face technique, which means that I've lined up in this gap, but my gap responsibility is that right there. So, Coach Bryant and him did it years ago. That's what he, that's where I learned from uh, when Coach Bryant, when they were out there. A face technique, I call it. i got to cross this guy's face to get my gap responsibility. They understand that, and it's such a simple term for them. We call that a face technique. Okay. This, this guy's going to work a face technique, it, and it's, uh, Coach, it's uh, uh, Trevor, okay? Now, what's going to happen, guys? What's going to happen? I ain't done a good job with Trevor. He's going to get too much depth before he U-turns, and the ball's going to come in here, and he can't get to it, okay? I hadn't done a good job teaching it. He does good later, but you guys will do the same thing. I mean, I've seen it happen a thousand times. You get too far up the field, and now the ball comes back underneath, okay? So Trevor doesn't do it, doesn't do very well on the thing. This is a, go show the back shot if you would. Okay. Good face technique. Just too deep before he started his U-turn, okay? All right, next shot. This is going to be, this is the, the defensive end here. And he doesn't work the line. That was no U-turn. This is, he doesn't work the line. And the ball breaks inside of him. He ought to work back down that line of scrimmage. He'd have made that play. Almost made it, but almost, you know. All right, go ahead with the back shot. Okay, that's why, that's why you turn in the line of scrimmage, the heel line, you turn in the heel line, all those things. That's why we work so hard at Up the field too far, didn't make the play. Okay, go to the next shot. I've seen enough there. I feel bad about that. All right, here we go. Here, here's, a, here's an interesting thing to make guys. This is the things that we're going to focus on, okay? Um, my daughter gave me this one year. If you chase two rabbits, both will escape. Some of you might have seen it. She gave me that. I, I keep it in my office. Okay. Let me tell you a story about the thing to, to show you. I, I, I think things like this are really important. There's a guy right now that plays with the Seattle Seahawks that told me, he's, he told me after the game this year, he said, I never really understood focus and what you meant by focus or what people meant by it until I saw the picture of that damn eagle. And he said, I realized it. I got a phone call uh, just a week or so ago from a guy who played for me years ago, and he's in the league now. And he, here's what he told me. He said, Coach, you know what? 
He said, every time I get down in that stance, I, I think about that damn eagle. And I, and it, it, cause it, it showed me what focus meant. Go ahead and show the picture. This, I had this up in my meeting room, and it explains to me what what focus. By God, that's focus. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what. You know what, guys? They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how. To, that's our job. We got to teach them how to focus on the proper things. Focus your eyes where they're supposed to be. Focus your mind where it's supposed to be, and and uh, that picture I've used that picture for years. I think it's so it's self-explanatory to the to the players. Actually, okay, go ahead. Here are the focus things right here. Okay, we're going to focus on on a good stance like we talked about. Now, here's the other thing: don't tip them with your eyes. Don't tip them with your eyes. You know, I tell my guys all the time. Yeah, offensive linemen are dumb as hell, but they ain't dumb enough not to pick up on that. You know, they ain't that dumb. You you got your eyes in there, and they realize that's a, it's not where your eyes have been. So you don't you want to focus on your stance. You want to focus on your eyes. You don't want to point or lean, and you don't want to. You know how that is. And then you don't want to false start a jump. Expect a hard count. Don't let the quarterback make. We want, we want him to know we're going to stunt after the damn play and we're getting up off the back. We don't want him to know it prior to that, okay? So the false starts and jumps, give that stuff away. Good alignment, we talked about this last night. It's something that I preach to him all the time. Align for success. Align for success. I was really pleased when I started using this. I heard our secondary, Ron, the secondary coach, started talking to the DBs. I heard him one day. You want to align for success. Inside relation, outside relation. It really fits anywhere on the football field. And I don't even know where the hell I got it or somebody. I know I didn't think it up. Shit, I never do that. But uh, a line for success. <coughs> get in a line that you can get the job done that fits the scheme, okay? Those are the focus points there, okay? Next, next thing, if you wish. <clears throat> okay, Stand, good stunt stance. We talked about it. Great ball reaction. Don't think he'll have. Think heel line. I want to get to the damn heel line. Now I'm going to work off the heel line, okay? Roll off the hand, consequently stay in the low. Don't lift the hand, roll off the hand, stay low, okay? Go ahead, coach. <clears throat> Efficient steps. We go where our feet take us. So we want to have efficient, the footwork being efficient is what we're looking for, okay? Proper angles. U turn down the heel line. What, what we just saw right here, number seven, the two guys that I showed an example of. And to be honest with you guys, I, I, we don't, I don't have much of that. I mean, I picked two plays there to show you people doing it really poorly. We, don't, we do a little bit better job normally than what those guys did in that particular shot. Proper angles to the ball. And what we all preach is great, great effort till the whistle. You know, we all preach that. That's, that's, but it but, should go without saying, but it's not bad to list it, okay? That's our focus points, okay? Next thing comes to <clears throat> Okay, if we got four basic moves. An inside gap charge, okay? An inside gap charge we call jam. Outside gap charge we call loop. A nose movement that we call an ole or a z. And a face technique is a gap charge from outside line. okay? Go ahead. So you identify, you, you identify what you're asking them to do in your scheme. That's what that is right there. All right, go ahead, coach. <clears throat> Here's the drill again, and I think this one's on the practice field. First phase is get off the football. Hard count, varied count, all that kind of stuff. Here's two guys right here. This guy's working a gap. This guy right here is working an ole. Here's my manager. Is, I'm sorry, it's dull like that. I'm not sure why it turned out that way. Steps. Now, that's where I want them to get to, and I'm back here. All right? So get off the ball is the first thing that they're thinking. All right, go ahead and run it, Coach. Now, you'll see the left five up here. Well, this is a jam, technique. This is jam. This is from head up or <coughs> from a tight alignment to the inside gap. Go ahead and run it, Coach. 
You can see him up there. Does a nice job of beating the North Carolina tackle off the ball. Now he's going to work the heel line and make the play. All started with beating him off the ball on the snap. The guy does a great job of getting off and, and the tackle does a poor job, okay? So we win that one. And he does a good job working the heel line. And here's a face technique from an outside alignment, from an outside alignment to the inside gap and be able to, I got it working this way, he should put it both ways. Be able to work either way. Okay, this is a face technique. Coach, it looks like there's a subtle difference between the face and the jam. <coughs> well, one of them is from a heavy alignment or head up. The other one is from outside location. So the difference between uh, a, an odd, well, a, a, odd okay. set and a yeah, set. and it, and coach, is a, is more to a difference than that. Mm -hmm. Let me. That's a good question. Okay. When I'm head up on this guy, or in a tough alignment, in a tight alignment, my aiming point on the inside gap charge is your hip, coach. Your hip. That's my aiming point. I'm on step 45, and my aiming point's your hip. If I've got a face technique now, I'm going to go. I, I'm going to be flatter. Okay. My aiming point now is you. You're the next lineman here. My aiming point is your ear hole. So it's a flatter charge, and it's based on the fact that I'm heavy on this guy, or I'm wide on this guy. Okay. So jam is one thing. Face is the other thing. Based on the line. Still got the inside gap responsibility. Good question. Thanks. Okay, I think it's a nose tackle shot here. Run it back one time and look at him again. This is a nice face technique by the guy. Now, when you see the TV shot, which is next, one of the things, oh, it's not on there, I'm sorry. Okay, this is what we call an Ole or Z. We do the big guys, we do Z with it. We do the, the, the smaller guys, we work Ole. All right, go ahead, coach. We're reading the center as we all late to that as we work to that gap. That's a slap and jump around. Back right, one time. Nice play by the by him too. Watch the Tennessee center. Good mixer. Good mixer. Good tackle too. Good mixer off your base defense. Okay, this is an outside step move. This is a loop. This particular one, I think we were, uh, we were taking the quarterback from the line of scrimmage in an eight-man front concept. So the defensive end, go ahead, coach. So the defensive end, so the defensive end's got the quarterback on the option. I think that's the one. Yeah, here it is right here. <coughs> we're defending the option from the line of scrimmage. Not coming out of the secondary. So we had to loop the five technique. He takes the quarterback. The defensive end takes the uh, pitch. You know how you do that. And we, where we didn't involve the second year. Okay. <clears throat> nice loop, loop move. Quarterback, defensive end takes him. Somebody knocks his hat. Okay. Here's a hoorah drill we talked about. This is, this is where we work on it. Ball reaction, good alignment, stunt stance, and steps. Off the ball, five yards. Working those proper steps. Five yard burst. Reacting to directions. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Hit the ground. Press the ground. Push it off. Break to the ball. Stop right there just a minute. Let me tell you. When I work for Saban, back him up, coach. When I work for Saban at LSU, every Tuesday, and this was a great idea, I thought. Stop him right there is good. I thought this was a great idea. Uh, on Tuesday, we did condition by position, okay? So we always, all of us, every position, did our own conditioning drills every Tuesday. And he wanted to see them run now, but it was by position. So I took this drill, it's just, it's just something that we did. We, uh, we, I would take this drill, and rather than that being a five-yard burst to this cone, I'd put it 30 yards, okay? So it, it became a uh, positional 40-yard uh, uh, dash, 40-yard run, rather than just running sprints. You understand what I mean? So 
So it can be used. This I was using it here as a learning agility drill. You can back this cone up and change it to a conditioning drill. Okay, go ahead and run. I just wanted to mention it there. It really worked out nice. All right, this is a wing. This is a weak side end. Okay, we're bringing the weak side in. And, and show this thing just a minute, Coach, and I'm going to stop and talk a minute. All right, hold it right there. All right, this is pre-practice. You know, I told you that we don't stretch. Coach, we hit that light right there, boys. We don't stretch. So pre-practice, we, we do something that has movement and acceleration. But if they stretch inside, we come out and we're ready to practice. And that, that warm-up period is a movement period because the boss don't want to sit on damn stretch. Okay? All right. Here's the one technique. Here's the crash five. Here's the weak side opening in five. We're going to work a wing here, which is a face by him. We're going to read this right here with the nose. If pass occurs, the nose is now going to tight wrap and contain for the quarterback. If the ball were to go this way, if the center were to go <coughs> this way, the nose would just play. So, this is what we call a read game. You have a penetrator and you have a reader. There's always somebody to back up the penetrator. That makes sense? I really like read games. I think they're very effective in the, against teams that play action pass and third and second medium and things like that, where you've got a penetrator. And, in, and in, you'll notice, if I said if pass occurs, it turns into what we call an ego game. The end going first, the tackle working around coming second. But if it's a run, if it's a run, let's say he's reaching him here. He's going. Let's say he's reaching him here. He's going to play one technique. So he plays one technique, he's the penetrator. Okay, that's, that's what read games means to us. All right. Now, this is that period where we're, where we're prior to practice. And we're working on getting off the ball, and we're working our footwork on this. Okay, Coach, get it for me, please. Thanks. Now, I told them it's going to be a pass. Sorry. So you got that tackle doing the container. The right end up at the top. Now, run it back one time from that view. Watch the two technique. We happen to be in a defense where you got a two technique over there with you. See the two technique work outside on the reach block? Mm -hmm. If it had been a cutoff block, he'd have gone that way. Funny story, this guy is a hell of a football player, guys, and by the time it's filmed over, you're going to realize it. Running back one time. He's such a great kid, I'm telling you. Hey, Ron, he's a seventh rounder. Hold it just a minute. He's a seventh rounder. Not this past year, the year before, he had 12 and a half sacks. He had 11 and a half tackles for loss, 116 tackles. I call him my damn rolling ball of butcher knife. I mean, he, 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 I hate like hell to be between him and something he really wanted bad. I'm done. But what a wonderful guy he is. So we're bringing him on the wing and we're reading it out with this guy. One of the, th one of the things I had, to, I had to get straightened out with him, watch his right hand right here. Going a little bit further with you. Hold it. The only time he ever did that was on the damn wing stuff. <laughs> I said, hey, Trent, please. Shit, I mean, you know, why don't you just tell him you're going to run the damn thing, you know? <laughs> but but uh, as you can see now, we tell him on this, come under all blocks. And you'll see, he makes some really nice plays on stuff like this. We try to move him because he's, he's so active. Under the blocks. Right there. Good. <clears throat> This is him against the Falcons this year. He's playing the right end over there at the top. We're reading it out with the nose. He's going to work it inside. You'll see it from the back view here pretty good. Go ahead with the back view, Coach. It'll be good. Then there's a TV view of it, I think. The nose tackle is reading it out. <coughs> if it's passed, he's going to loop it. But he's reading it out. He's good at this stuff, well, I tell you. He really creates some good things for us. Now, here's the left end. He doesn't make this play, but watch the left end at the top. What I think it does, it diverts it here because what it does, 
and show the back end. This is what I'm talking about stunts. It changes gap responsibility on the move. That's what we try to get out of the stunt. Go ahead to the back end for us, Coach. Changed everything. That one that one guy in there foiled up everything for the offense. So so it, it's really helpful to us right there. And you see the you see the wheel scraping and you see the uh, nose the nose is playing one technique. Okay, good. I believe this is gonna be no uh, uh, this is it here, I think. Now the thing we tell him to do, keep coming with this thing. Keep coming, keep coming. Don't give up on it and go around the back door and leave us a hole there. And watch him here. The tackle cuts him off. He just keeps coming and makes a play. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it and stop. you got to get to that A-gap. Okay? Wing. Weak side defensive end. Now, Stop right here just a minute. I believe this is it. I believe this is a ricochet. I believe it. We're going to bring him, they're going to zone it this way. As we come and they zone it, we try to get our hands on the guy and we try to use him to ricochet back out. That's a ricochet technique with us. See if I think he does it on this one. Yeah, this is it. Go ahead and run the back. Hey guys, when you've stunned it down on the inside, you may play on a wide zone like that. I mean, you, you, he's doing some good work for you. Back to you, coach. Here he comes. Ricochet. Back out. You turn the heel line, big guy. You turn the heel line. Ricochet technique. Okay, go ahead and run it, coach. Okay, run that one back one time. We're working 75 inside. Watch 98. Watch 98. He's playing one technique. He just plays one technique. So we've got a penetrator, we've got a reader, okay? Here's, this is a tackle-tackle game. It's Tom in one defense and Jerry in another. Now, don't, I never understood that, but they, uh, I, uh, I could not get uh, Jim. I got Jim to do a lot of things. I said, oh, the same thing. One's out under, one's out over. He said, no, we've always called Tom and Jerry. I said, oh, okay. Well, I can learn that. Tom and Jerry. Way okay. back in the 80s, Chicago Bears. Yeah. I mean, why don't we call both of them Tom? She had the same thing. Yeah, it doesn't matter, though. So <laughs> sometimes you have to do that. It didn't really matter. Go ahead. This is a tackle-tackle game. Now, this here. here's your penetrator. And the first thing he does is, just crack the shit out of the center on the on the turnout block. Nice job by by the three technique. The one technique starts to wrap it. Okay. Now here's one. This is a really good U-turn by the three technique. Back up a bit, coach. I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry. No Remind me that. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> You got the three on the face. Turns that ricochet because the ball's going out and the center's reaching them. Mm-hmm. Okay. <clears throat> I believe yeah, this is another ricochet by the other guy. This is 97. Here, yeah, this is the other. This is a ricochet going on the back end, coach. Uh. <coughs> All right, now go back one time. Just I want just I will tell you about what we talk about here. All right, now stop it just a minute, coach. Right there. All right, for him to come to this inside gap, coach. 
for him to come to this inside gap. That's a jam technique because he's doing it out of a two. Right. All right. If he was eye hand 